Good morning, everybody. This is story time with teacher Emma. Today we are wrapping up our week that we are appreciating our mothers all week long and our grandmothers. So today's book is The Mother's Day, the Mother's Day Mice by Eve Bunting, illustrated by Jan Brett. You can see this. All right. Biggest little mouse wakened first. It was early morning and still almost dark. He tugged gently on the whiskers of the middle mouse, who slept next to him. It's Mother's Day, he whispered. Time to get up and go out for a present. Middle mouse tugged gently on the whiskers of little mouse, who slept between him on the wall. Mother's Day, he whispered. They crept out of bed and tiptoed past Mother's room. One, two, three, mice. Outside, one star still slept in the sky. They stopped to wash paws and faces in a pail of water mother kept by the front door. Biggest studied his, the biggest mouse studied his watch. We have two hours before mother wakes up. Middle and I know what we're getting for and where to find it. He looked at little mouse and waited. I know what I'm getting too, little mouse said. Honeysuckle, biggest, the biggest shook his head. Little mouse, honeysuckle grows only on honeysuckle cottage. And we know who lives in Honeysuckle Cottage. You'll have to find something else for mother. Little Mouse wanted to argue, but Biggest Mouse was already lining them up, one behind the other. Hold tails and be quiet as we go, he said. The dark has dangers for, my, for little mice. They ran across the meadow. Little Mouse liked the tough, smooth feel of his brother's tail. He thought the three of them joined together must be as long as a snake. He didn't want them to think about snakes, though. The edges of the sky were streaked with morning. A red fox passed them on his way home. They crouched till the white tip of his tail disappeared in the trees. Grr, little mouse said fiercely. Who's afraid of him? But his voice was so weak that he couldn't hear it himself. An owl sheared above them as they lay hidden in the long grass. Little Mouse kept his eyes tight and closed. If he couldn't see the owl, the owl couldn't see him. You didn't have to squeeze my tail so hard, Little Mouse told him when they stood up. I thought you might be frightened, Little Mouse said. I was telling you I was here. Middle Mouse sniffed. A strawberry patch grew at the edge of the meadow. There's my surprise for mother, Middle Mouse said. She loves strawberries. She says she, the first one taste of summer is coming. Biggest Mouse boosted him up so he could get the roundest, reddest berry from the top. Its weight tipped him backwards as he carried it. My surprise is here too, Biggest Mouse said. He picked up a dandelion fluff ball and held it high by its milky stem. It's a wish flower, a wish flower from mother. Little Mouse thought that the fluff ball was as beautiful as spinning webs of spiders. He couldn't see the sky through it. Mother will love it, Little Mouse said. Now we can go for honeysuckle? We have time, and maybe he won't be there. Biggest Mouse sighed, we'll go look, but only because you're the littlest and it's Mother's Day, and we won't go close. Cat is always there. Cat was there. He lay on the porch of Honeysuckle Cottage, monstrously big, monstrously black. When he yawned, his mouth was a dark spiked cave. Little Mouse couldn't see it clearly, even though they weren't too close. Maybe he'll leave soon, Little Mouse whispered. He pulled his eyes away from the cat to the honeysuckle that twined around the porch. Honeysuckle for mother. Inside the cottage, someone was playing a piano. The tune was Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Dum, dee, dum, dum, dee, dum. Dum dee dum as they all hummed along. Maybe Cat likes to lie in the sun and listen to music, Little Mouse whispered. Maybe the person will stop playing soon and Cat will go away. He sniffed the honeysuckle air and pretended not to see the biggest mouse. Check the time. Dum dee dum dee dum dee da. That person is not going to stop playing. Middle muttered, he set his strawberry on the ground and a beetle came on the run. Middle picked it up again and shooed the beetle away. Little Mouse began creeping toward the cottage on his belly. Biggest yanked him back by his tail. Stop that. Anyways, it's time to go. 
What if mother wakes up on Mother's Day and all her little mice are missing or eaten? Middle added. We have to go, Vega said. I'm sorry, little mouse. But inside little mouse's head, something had started to be. Something wonderful that was the beginning of an idea. Something better than honeysuckle. Yeah. It's all right, little mouse said. The sun made a pink path across the meadow as they ran for home. Bring her a daisy, biggest said over his shoulder. She likes daisies. Bring her a rock, little puff, a small rock that's not too hard to carry. They are nice, little mouse said, but they're not special enough for this special day. He had something special though. He had it strong and firm in his mind when they got home. Biggest stood the fluff ball on the jar beside his mother's chair. Middle put the strawberry on the blue dish on the table. I'm glad I didn't roll it. I am glad we didn't roll it, but I carried it all the way and it, and it isn't even squished. He glanced sideways at Little Mouse. The strawberry can be from you too, Little Mouse said. And the fluff ball will be from the both of us, Biggest said. Little Mouse smiled. Thank you, but I bought something of my own. He thought it was funny when his brothers looked all around and they rolled their eyes at each other. Something I kept hidden, he said. Biggest Mouse held up a warning paw. Shh, mother is coming. Happy Mother's Day, they all shouted when they came into the kitchen. And mother said, why? You remembered. Remember, we almost got eaten three. Middle began, but the biggest poked him hard. Sometimes middle talked too much. Mother blew on the fluff ball and exploded into a million beautiful feathery seeds. Did you make a wish? Biggest Mouse asked. Yes, a wonderful wish. Mother cut the strawberry in four pieces. I love strawberries, she said. The first one tastes of summer coming. She nibbled on the edge of the berry and closed her eyes. And little mouse said she knew she was tasting sunshine and sweet corn on the cold waters of Meadow Stream. Now me, he said. He's so excited. He thought he might explode like the fluff ball into a million little pieces. The music he had heard at Honeysuckle Cottage was loud in his mind. And he clasped his paws and began to sing. He sang the words, the the words he thought of them as he ran home. We have brought a song to sing. Happy, happy Mother's Day. No one's mother is so nice. Love from all your little mice. That was wonderful, Mother said. When he was finished, how astonished his brothers were. They thought they had had nothing at all. And all along, he had this. Was it better than honeysuckle? Little Mouse said. Much better, better Mother said. Honeysuckle doesn't last forever, a song does. Was it the best of all your surprises? As soon as he asked that, Little Mouse felt me. The song is from all of us, he added quickly. Mother smiled. All my surprises were lovely. You each bought me something different and you each bought me something the same. Do you know what that was, Little Mouse? Little Mouse knew. They had brought her their love. Mother opened her arms right wide and they ran to her. Let's sing Little Mouse's song, she said. Mother and her three little mice swayed together as they sang, and the kitchen was warm with wishes and summer coming and music and love. Happy Mother's Day. Well, thank you all for joining us. That was a longer book, so I'm just going to do the one today, but um, I really appreciate it and appreciate all you mothers and grandmothers out there. We will see you for afternoon story time at one o'clock. Thank you.